Okay, so now let me try and list out more as a summary of what all groups are there in the literature and what are the notations. Any questions? Okay, Lie groups, general linear group of degree n is a set of invertible n cross n matrices under matrix multiplication. Matrices with real entries are GLNR and matrices with complex entries are GLNC. Subgroups of GLN, sorry, GL are SLN, R or SLNC. Orthogonal groups are subgroups of GLN, R, R, okay. Orthogonal groups have only real entries there. Symplectic groups, I am sure you would have done symplectic groups in your classical mechanics group uh, course, where you do not only work with position, you also work with momentum, that is what we call it as a phase space, right. So, you have, so let me take a simple two dimensional phase space. So, you can have x and p x. So, that is a two dimensional phase space. Okay. If you are in three dimension, it will become x y z and p x p y p z. So, it is a six dimensional phase space and then you are allowed to do here it will be a two cross two matrix, here it will be a six cross six matrix. So, what are the matrix transformations you can do such that your Poisson bracket is preserved, right. What is Poisson bracket? Is 1, x and x is 0, p x p x is 0, you know that, okay. So, this is what you need to preserve under any transformation. So, I can call this so, this one gives me x prime p x prime, this Poisson bracket will go to x prime p x prime under such a transformation such that this is going to be still 1, this is what you have learnt. So, what are that set of 2 cross 2 matrices? that set of 2 cross 2 matrices belong to a symplectic group. Okay. So, these m's are elements of symplectic group 2 and if they are real entries s p 2 r. Okay. What about here? m will be elements of S p 6 comma R. Okay. So, this Poisson bracket being preserved, what does it imply on these matrices? What does it imply on these matrices? M j m transpose have to be j or it is other way round. So, m transpose anyway it does not really matter what I call as m you can call it m transpose. What is j? If you remember my generalized orthogonal transformation this j was replaced by some diagonal matrix with some of them positive some of them negative right remember. Generalized orthogonal matrices I called it as a matrix G right. 
right. By m comma n I mean that this one will be m of them will be of one signature n of them will be of other signature. Similarly, here these have to be even dimensional. So, let me write it, it is always even dimensional, phase space is even dimensional, it does not work in odd dimension because every position you will have a momentum. Okay. So, this is 2 n, what is this j such that your poison bracket is preserved? I am sure you would have done it, anybody knows? Is it diagonal or off diagonal? Off diagonal? So, j turns out to be 0 0 which is n cross n, n cross n, it is 0. Okay. All the entries in this n cross n matrix do not take it to be orthogonal, it is 0 and this one is minus identity and plus identity that is also n cross n. If you have not done this Goldstein has a chapter on canonical transformations please go and take a look at it. Okay. I am going to confine myself only to unitary groups in the rest of the lectures even though I will give you a formal aspects I am not going to look at other groups in detail, okay. but anybody is interested this is the natural canonical transformations which you do in phase space in your classical mechanics course. The set of matrices belong to a group which is called symplectic group, element which belongs to the symplectic group will always satisfy this condition. So, let me stop on this Lie group business, yeah, is that fine? So, some of these listing is just for completeness on the slide which I am showing that symplectic groups S p 2 n r are another subgroups of S l special linear groups, they are nothing but classical transformation, canonical transformation in classical mechanics. M is called as a symplectic 2 n cross 2 n matrix, symplectic matrix if it satisfies this condition. Okay. I have summarized whatever I did on board on the slide. Okay. So, this also I have already given you a flavor that rotation of any spin j particle the corresponding matrix will be what? J hat is a formal linear operator I have written, number of parameters is 3, number of generators is 3, no change in that. But the dimension of this matrix will depend on what vector space it is going to act on. If the spin of the particle is J, how many states it allows? It allows from plus j to minus j in steps of 1, decreasing steps of 1. So, the dimensionality of the vector space is 2j plus 1 for spin half, it is plus half and minus half, j is half. So, 2j plus 1 is 2, but in general it is a 2j plus 1 vector space and the corresponding j operators have to be. 2j plus 1 cross 2j plus 1 matrices which are irreducible representations acting on that vector space, but they still are SU2 belongs to the SU2 Lie algebra. If I give you a 3 cross 3 matrix and I give a Lie algebra, if I ask what is the group then you should know it is SU2, but it is a 3 dimensional irreducible higher dimensional representation of SU2 Lie algebra. Okay. Okay. So, what is the meaning of saying that it is an irreducible vector space? The group elements when it acts on this state any arbitrary state, it should only mix amongst the 
2 j plus 1 states should not take you out of that state. That is the meaning of saying that this vector space is irreducible vector space. Okay. Huh? I will give you an example. No, no, no. I will I will give you an example now. I will give you an example and then you will see what is happening. Okay. So, a simple example is that take two spin half particles. Okay. So, suppose I take up and down as one vector space and let me take another one another up and down let me put a subscript 1 1 and 2 2 to remember that it is particle 1 and particle 2 just like we took momentum and position taking particle 1 and particle 2. For this you know these are the matrices which are irreducible representation for this you know the same matrices are the irreducible representation. Now, I want to take a tensor product of these two. Okay. So, what will happen? I am sure you all know. Is that right? What will happen to the matrices on it? You take this J 3 and take a product of J 3 right. What will this be? Minus 1 Am I right? Have I done it correctly? Yeah, I think I have done it correctly. Is this a reducible representation? It is a reducible representation and not an irreducible representation. Okay. What you can do is now we can do a projection. projection to break this into a 3 cross 3 and a 1 cross 1. Okay. What is the vector space corresponding to this 3 cross 3? this will get reduced the basis states also will get reduced to someone this is a 3 cross 1 and a 1 cross 1. This is a binary basis which is obtained by taking tensor product and doing a projection to find the basis for the three dimensional irreducible representation of SU2 algebra and one dimensional representation of the SU2 algebra. Right. Another way of saying is this is like singlet it better be a one dimensional representation with the binary basis. You can start doing this for tertiary basis and so on. Okay. So, I am connecting up what you did in the discrete groups and only thing here is that I am working with the Lie algebra, generators of the Lie algebra acting on the vector space, but if you want to look at the group elements, it is not going to do anything new because exponentiation will only again follow the same. So, whatever group operation I am going to do on this 
if it is an irreducible vector space it is going to mix only this. Okay. So, that will not be the situation for your uh, in general. So, what I am trying to say is that you cannot go from here to here these two are non talkative space. So, this is a reducible space which obtained by tensor product of two spin half particles and then what is the projector is what you will ask what is the analog formula for the projector and that I will that is the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients which I will try and give you some flavor. 